With NATO calling it quits, Afghanistan has yet again been abandoned by the West. After 20 years, the US-led alliance couldn't bring peace to the country. Now another regional organization could step in to stabilize the situation. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, a bloc led by China and Russia, just approved Iran's steps towards membership. And addressing the situation in Afghanistan is set to become one of the group's top priorities. <laughs> Discuss the SCO and some of its regional interests. Joining me now from Ankara is Murat Aslan. He is a faculty member of Sabah Din Zaim University. And from Hong Kong, David Arase. He is a resident professor at the Hopkins Najgin Center of the John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, David, uh, Iran is set to become a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. What is the relevance of this addition? Is it a sign of its look east? foreign policy orientation? Well, I think that's the way Iran might want to look at it. But uh, I think looking at it from the point of view of the other SCO members, uh, at this point, they really need Iran's participation and full cooperation to manage the situation in Afghanistan, because it's in a very important bordering country. And uh, the SCO countries are going to need all the help they can get. To, to manage the situation in Afghanistan. Right, Murat, uh, David is saying the other SCO members, uh, in a way, need Iran at this point. Um, you know, we know SCO's main aim is regional stability. Um, how much do you think this move was spurred by Taliban's recent takeover of Afghanistan and its simultaneous US fiasco? Uh, what are the risks for Iran and the region at the moment? The collapse of Afghan governments reminds the probability of radicalism in overall Asia, mainly Central Asia. And for sure, uh, this perception mobilized the countries leading this region, like China and Russia, to include new players and also be prepared for a wave of another radicalism in the form of terrorism. Because we know that collective security organization is responsible for military terms, providing security in Central Asia, mainly through Russian guarantees. And China is more concerned on the uh, Western part of China and also economic investments. But Iran will complement this picture, maybe to balance Taliban through Shia descent Hazaras in Afghanistan. But you know, still, it's a matter of calculation, but we don't know, we don't know if it will fit the requirements or not. Right. David, then, at this moment in time, is the U.S. retreat providing uh, this organization with more power, with more momentum? <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't really see it that way. I think, I think it, it, it creates a big headache, a big problem. You know, the U.S., in a way, has uh, been carrying a lot of uh, water for, for the region in terms of maintaining stability, containing uh, terrorism, you know, tamping down the situation and try, trying to, you know, seriously stabilize it for the past 20 years. Uh, and the U.S. just finally gave up. And 
you know, it left so abruptly, which is kind of deplorable. Uh, but um, the fact that it left isn't empowering the region. It isn't empowering the SCO. It's giving it a big headache. Right. Murat, uh, India and Pakistan were also added to the SCO in 2017. And um, the SCO, you know, as an organization, has uh, nine member states with many observer nations and many dialogue partners as well. You know, it counts uh, countries such as India and Pakistan together under the same umbrella uh, organization. So uh, they've been bitter rivals uh, in, in, in the past, but they're now part of the same team. Do you think it will be difficult for the SCO to manage this in, internal contradictions and differences in a way? Could this be a weakness? Actually, it depends on the perception of the parties because if Pakistan or India perceive this organization as a ground to achieve their interests, no problem. Or this organization may offer a chance to have these two countries communicate with each other, well, it's a good thing. On the other hand, they don't have to agree on everything, but just present themselves in the organization and search for their benefits. Because we know that China and India has disputes because of the border issues, and Pakistan and China is very close, but there is a balance, not at the global level, sometimes in the regional organizations as well. So why not? India and Pakistan may sit together, discuss, they may agree or disagree. That's another thing. Mm. Uh, David, in a way, the US has failed uh, in its efforts to, to put China and Russia against one another. I mean, uh, quite the opposite at the moment. The, the two countries sit side by side in, in many organizations, you know, uh, not just the SEO, also BRICS, G20, uh, the UN. How much and how big of a threat is this? China-Russia alliance uh, as of today, as well as organizations such as the SCO and BRICS? Well, I, I think the, the correct word to use is not alliance, but a strategic partnership. Uh, you know, an alliance means that, you know, two parties are bound by a treaty commitment to defend the other if the other's attacked. But that's not the situation with Russia and China. If if, if Russia gets involved in a war, let's say, uh, over Crimea or in the Baltic for some reason with NATO, China is not going to come to Russia's assistance. And if China gets into a war with the U.S. in the South China Sea or over Taiwan or something like that, Russia is not going to get involved. So they're not, they're not allies. Um, they're strategic partners. They cooperate when it's convenient and expedient for them to do this. And um, so I think, you know, with the U.S., the U.S. still actually has a co-op, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an increasingly sort of uh, stressful relationship between the U.S. and Russia and the U.S. and China, but there, there still is a good amount of cooperation um, between, and mutual restraint between the U.S. and, and these other two countries. And then finally, um, you know, Russia and China present different kinds of strategic problems for the U.S. Uh, Russia is primarily a land power uh, and uh, confronts the U.S. Uh, you know, on land in NATO. And China is primarily a, a, a maritime and cyber space threat. And so it, and it confronts the U.S. In, in an entirely different area of the world. So um, it, it, isn't, it isn't like China plus Russia against the U.S., you know, full stop. It's, that's not really the way uh, to look at it. Uh, David, on this, how does the SCO then compare to NATO, if we can even compare it as of today? No, it's, uh, it would be a false comparison because NATO is a collective defense agreement. I mean, they are all allies, that group. They have a joint command. Uh, which means the milit all the members, not only will they automatically respond if, if one is attacked, but they have committed troops uh, under a joint command, the, 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 joint, the military commander happens to be an American. Um, and uh, the, I mean, there's, there, there's a political dimension to this, there's a political assembly, uh, it, it, the members are united by values and interests, um, they fought side by side together, just even even in Af Afghanistan. The SCO is a talk shop. Right? It, it's a discussion forum. 
And the purpose of this forum is for the members to cooperate against terrorism, number one, but number two, engage in preventive diplomacy. And all that means is that the members try to talk to each other to avoid misunderstandings and avoid conflict. Interesting, uh, David. Murat, Turkey is also one of the dialogue partners in the SCO. Um, how far could Turkey, a member of NATO, advance um, relations with the SCO's leading members and how much would it want to do so at the moment in terms of you know, becoming a full member or an observer nation? Turkey announced a new strategy regarding Asia. New uh, Asia again. The name of the official name of the strategy is. Uh, so within this strategy, Turkey is looking forward cooperation with the countries in Asia, and also uh, Far East and also Southern Asia. That means that covers the overall continent. On the other hand, there are allegations about Turkey that there is a shift of access in Turkish foreign policy for the Americans, for instance. But it's not. It's about having a ground in Asia to cooperate, to further cooperation, and also be involved in consultation mechanisms. Because Turkey has been continuously interacting with Central Asia. And also the outcome of the problems in Asia, like Afghan issue, uh, has somehow an effect in Turkish daily life. So I think Turkish inclusion to this forum in the future uh, is not that much bad, but increase the availability of cooperation. Right, David, one last thing. The last time uh, the SCO met, uh, the conversation focused on preventing the rise of extremism in Afghanistan. I mean, the situation now is, is not easy at all, especially the economic uh, situation is dire. Uh, how optimistic are you that some sort of stability is reached within the country? Well, uh, it's going to be very difficult. There are a few different uh, things going on at the same time. Uh, I think the first is the uh, the problem of legitimacy. You know, the Taliban uh, regime needs to be recognized by the international community in order to receive economic assistance. Um, it can still receive humanitarian assistance, but the scale of the problem is enormous, and there's no logistical system inside Afghanistan to deliver the aid, even if the West wanted to deliver it. Okay, so so that's fundamentally not a good situation. And if uh, and at the same time, the SCO, all right, this is their opportunity to step up and assume responsibility for for stabilizing their region because Afghanistan is right in the middle of this SCO region. And if anybody's going to do it, it's got to be them, right? But but the response has been very uh, tepid. Uh, you know, their response, well, I think China offered $31 million. You know, that's that's not going to do anything. Uh, you know, and secondly, the SCO statement said that they were looking to the UN to lead uh, a relief and stabilization effort. Uh, well, you know, if the SCO was such a capable organization, maybe they should be assuming responsibility for this. Right. right? Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, we have to end it there. Uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, today, David and Murat.